For Jillian, symptoms started in June of last year. I would stand up and immediately feel dizzy and lightheaded. When you finally look at a calendar and start putting things together, you realize, wow, all of this started after she got COVID in June. What Jillian and between one to three million Americans have is a life-changing condition called POTS, or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome. Basically, it's a condition that can cause some scary symptoms, including dizziness, fainting, brain fog, heart palpitations, and fatigue, amongst others. And most cases are actually diagnosed in younger women in their 20s and 30s. What is it like for these patients? What are they telling you? How is it affecting their lives? Uh, it affects their life in a very significant way. So if you think about it, if you're tired all day, all day long, if you cannot stand up for a long time or walk around for a long time, unfortunately they stop working or they have to probably go part-time from full-time. Their life is significantly affected by diseases. Dr. Tay Chung directs the POT Center at Johns Hopkins University and is a world-renowned expert in the field. Many of the patients who come to him struggle for years to get an explanation for their symptoms. Just having a diagnosis uh, is incredibly powerful. Until they get diagnosed with POTS, their symptoms are often dismissed uh, by many healthcare providers and they're very frustrated. For Jillian, POT symptoms made performing in marching band that much harder as she couldn't stand for a long time without feeling dizzy or lightheaded. Her case is not unusual. Scientists are saying there's been a rise in POTS since the pandemic, as the coronavirus is believed to play a role. Data shows that up to 14% of COVID survivors can develop the condition. More than just about a year waiting list before COVID pandemic. Now, after COVID pandemic, my waiting list has gone more than two years. The issue is... POTS isn't very well understood yet, and diagnosis and treatment can take months. We're going to start the tilt. POTS is typically diagnosed using a special test called a tilt table, where a patient lies on a table to see how different positions affect their heart rate and blood pressure. Now you can see two different monitors here. Your heart rate went by just less than 10 points, which is very normal, although you feel like you feel a little went up there, but it's completely normal. So it went up by 10 points in a POTS patient. What would you see there? I would say definitely more than 30 to 40 points up from their baseline. Not only is a special test typically used, there's a shortage of doctors who actually know how to care for people with POTS. In the U.S., there are only about 100 clinics specializing in this condition, and we don't yet have effective treatments besides hydration and a high-salt diet. But for Jillian, her best advice to those struggling, advocate for your own health, especially if you feel dismissed. My biggest message is just to listen to yourself and not let other people dictate who you are or how you're feeling. Dr. Sayal joins us now, and it's good that she feels empowered as a result of this, Akshay. But, you know, we have this diagnosis. That's one issue, right? Once some of these patients have a label for what's going on with them, figuring out how to treat it, how to, how to get better, uh, that, that seems like that would just be a whole other obstacle on its own, right? Yeah, Aaron. I mean, part of the problem, as, as you just heard, is, is actually getting a diagnosis. And for patients who are often struggling with symptoms for a long time, just hearing those words that we think you have this condition can be really cathartic and really set up the next phase in terms of getting treatment. Um, but it's fitting that we're talking about this today as, as the COVID uh, the public health emergency is set to end, just because we're, as we move into the next phase and deal with the long-term impacts of the virus, this is really a condition that stands out, this and long COVID in general, um, Aaron. But there is some good news and some bad news. You know, the bad news is there's no cure for this disease. The good news, about 80 percent of people do improve. And this is very manageable with things like hydration and a high salt diet. You know, I want to ask you, too, since you mentioned that the, the, the COVID public health emergency ending tonight, uh, uh, you're a practicing physician. What exactly does that mean for, for regular folks? What do we all need to understand about that? Well, it's, it's significant. I mean, we, we're talking about a three-year public health emergency that we've seen waves and waves and waves of, of the virus come and go. But Aaron, I think the, the big takeaway here is that, you know, the virus is still with us. The effects of the virus are still with us. I believe we're seeing about a thousand deaths a week still from COVID. Um, so it's not a, a time to completely let our guard up, but at the same time, it is significant with the progress we've made. And, and uh, as we start to get into the next phase, we start to wonder about, about the long-term effects, and we'll see that coming up. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.